Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to thank you for joining me with Monday's Daily Bible Study, coming from Charlene's Outreach Ministries. Amen. We have a wonderful lesson today. Stay true. Stay true. As we are coming up to, uh, as we talked about Sunday's lesson, God provides water from the rock. We'll be talking about uh, all the things that you need to and monitor up for. Uh, and staying true and in, in knowing that God is a provider. Amen. This is our lesson for this uh, uh, first uh, four weeks of the uh, uh, of this uh, fall quarter. Uh, uh, God providing. Amen. And we are speaking of God providing water from a rock. Amen. <clears throat> But before we get started, our lesson is coming from Deuteronomy 6, verse 13 through 19. <clears throat> but we're going to get ready and get started. But we're going to ask us if, you, if anything is said touches your heart, soul, or spirit. Or you have any questions or comments, please feel free to drop them at the bottom below. And I will get to them as soon as possible. <clears throat> and I would also like to ask if you would like prayer, please let me know. And I will uh, add you to the prayer list. Or if you have anything uh, that you wanted to say. Uh, you could uh, send it to the church's email at God's Hand at Work at Charlene's Outreach Ministries dot com. Okay. <clears throat> um, before uh, we also would like to say, if you would subscribe to my channel and join with us as we gather together to study and meditate on the Word of the Lord. Amen. We're going to have prayer, then we're going to move right into the lesson. Dear God in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for waking us up this morning and guiding us and leading us in your true path of righteousness. We thank you for all that you have done, you have done, and you shall do in each of our lives, Father. We thank you for making a way out of no way. We thank you, Father, for all the blessings that you bestow upon us, those seen and unseen. Lord, we give you glory, honor, and praise. Father, we thank you as we get ready to go into your word, Father, as we get ready to study your word, Father, we pray that you will uh, and give us, uh, open our eyes that we may see and our ears that we may hear and give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding from on high as we study and meditate on your word that we may become closer to you, be stronger in you as we go through our trials and tribulation, Father, we give you honor, glory, and praise, amen. All right, we have, as we say, a wonderful lesson. Stay true. Coming from Deuteronomy 6, verse 13 through 19. And the scripture lesson takes read, Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, and serve him, and shall swear by his name. You shall not go after other gods, of the gods of the people which are around about you. For the Lord thou God is a jealous God among you, lest the anger of the Lord thou God be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. You shall not tempt the Lord your God as you tempted him in Massa. You shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his testimony and his statutes which he hath commanded thee, and thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest go in for go in and possess the good land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to cast out all thine enemies from before thee, as the Lord has spoken. Amen. This is a powerful lesson as we see here. There, we, as we stay true to God, as we uh, follow his word, we do know that he is a jealous God, amen, that he will not share his uh, throne with another God that we put in, in place of him and then have to come to him uh, when the other God is no count. The other God is just something that we have placed in his place, amen. He will not be that. Do you, we look at that as, as, as a marriage, as a, as a union together. Uh, we do not allow uh, other gods to come in and, and put and be in our heart as before God. And then when things is, will go wrong, then we have to go to him. He will not accept that. And we would not accept that in our life. Amen. <clears throat> 
commentary says this fear is reverence. It is speaking of having tremendous respect for the person of the Lord. This sort of reverence would cause one to serve him. There is no greater name. God himself swore by his own name because there was none greater. This swear means to take great confidence in his name and who he is. One of the main reasons that God did not want his people marrying the heathen around them was because of their false gods. A husband or a wife can cause a person to sometimes wander away from God. We know the downfall of Solomon was when he built places of worship of false gods for his wives. The gods of this world are not to be worshipped. Worship the creator and not anything or anyone of his creations. Amen. <clears throat> As we know, God is the author of everything that is made. He was near to them, in the midst of them, his tabernacle being placed between their camps, and was a God a God jealous of his honor and glory in matters of worship and would resent any affront given him in that way. A jealous God in in uh, uh, Deuteronomy 4 and 24 suffered them to be carried captive out of their own land and to be scattered among the nations of the world and be utterly destroyed. He will not accept a sharing in, in, in with another God. Jesus quoted the first portion of this verse, you should not tempt the Lord your God. When Satan tempted him in Matthew 4 and 7 and Luke 4 and 12, humans are the servants of God for them to presume upon or test God is sin. 1 Corinthians 10 and 9, just like when you do not accept God as your Lord and Savior, then you are the servant of Satan. Massa means trial of or temptation in this particular place it is speaking of the place where they murmured about the lack of water as we know as we talked about on sunday uh, they tempted god by uh whining and complaining instead of asking him like they asked for uh, a savior someone to come and rescue them from the egyptians just as they asked him for that they could have asked him for water amen another name for this place is Meribeth is, is shown in uh, Exodus 17, 1 through 7, and our Sunday's lesson, Matthew 4 and 7, and also Luke 4 and 12. The word diligently shows us they will work at keeping the testimony, statutes, and commandments. It must stay uh, uppermost in their minds. Their welfare depends upon them keeping them. It said this means they must desire in their hearts to do the will of God as we must desire to follow after God. We must have a desire in our heart in order to do right. We, have, we must pursue with all diligence to do his will. God will bless them far above what they could ask or even think if they are obedient to his will. We have to be obedient to his will and he will bless us above what we can ask or think. Amen. It said they must go into the land of promise to receive these blessings. God had promised their forefathers. They must go into the land. <clears throat> and said, uh, because he had promised them something great, they did could not say where they was at and receive what he had for them. Just like when he want us to do something, he want we must go to that area and do this. And in doing so, then we become stronger. In doing so, he can bless us more and more. And said so they must go into the land and receive these blessings with the faith only with the faith that God will take care of them. The Lord is with them when they have faith in him. Amen. He will uh, allow us to receive the blessing when we have faith in him and walk in him as we are following his word. Amen. We not cannot uh, 
presume that we can uh, half-heartedly do what we are supposed to do for the Lord and not have faith in Him and expect Him to do everything we ask. He's not going to do everything we ask no matter what it is because it is not for the benefit of the, of the whole. His uh, His his uh, desire is for the benefit of the whole. It's just like a, a manager of a company, a, a, a mother, a father of a house. Their, their, their whole desire, their whole outreach is the benefit of the whole, what's best for the whole house, what, what's best for the company, what's best for everyone. And this is what God is after, what is going to benefit the entire world. If something we are doing is going to benefit as many of the masses as possible. Amen. I pray you meditate on this wonderful lesson and have a great and blessed day.